problems with Bernac Vulcan model steam engines. This is part one. I recently bought a second Bernac Vulcan online because I wanted one that was original and complete. I found what looks like some common problems with them, the crankshaft and safety valve. This particular Bernac Vulcan came with a box. All right, the box is a bit beaten up, but then it was made between 1946 and 1949. I didn't arrive on the planet until 1953, and these days I'm looking a bit beaten up too. When I bought this particular Bernat Vulcan online, I knew exactly what I was buying. Can you spot what's wrong with it? Well, I don't think the Meccano pulley is original. And I don't think the mounting bracket is meant to be clumsily bent in the way that it is. I'll re-bend the bracket back into its original shape later on in the video. Here's a view from underneath the base, and as you can see, it is clearly original, a Bernac product made in England. On the other one I bought, the safety valve was not right at all. It was made up of various bits and pieces, and it was actually dangerous. This one is original. Something to think about. This safety valve is made entirely from brass, so why is it rusty? The rust is all that is left of the spring that held the safety valve in position. I'm going to make another spring, but I'll make it from a material that does not rust. Below the rusty safety valve is the safety valve from the original engine. I had to redo the knurling because it was chewed up, and it also appears to have been machined. It's a different shape. I'm not going to use either of these safety valves for the Super Vulcan that I'm making, and I'm not going to use a Mamod safety valve either. I'm going to use a proper one, like you would get on a small steam locomotive. After filming this, I put both safety valves back in the box. And here I'm fitting my airline connector. This is something that I made to allow me to feed air safely to small toy engines. This engine was very dry and devoid of oil of any kind, so I'm treating it. After many years, I'm applying some Hallett Oils lubricating oil. This is not steam oil, that's too thick, and it's not machine oil, that's too thin. This is just right. Pretty much the same as Goldilocks said when she was sampling the bear's porridge. Here's the burner, and one piece of wick is missing. That's because the piece that's missing is the short piece, and you remove that to fill the unit. It's a bit of an illusion. The other wick goes all the way into the tank, and there's quite a lot of it in there. This short piece of wick that you remove for filling goes all the way to the bottom of the tank, but it's easily removed. This clip shows both burners, the one from this engine and the one that I've modified from the previous one. I had a piece of wick left from the burner on the right, so I used that in the burner in this engine. The other engine that I bought was supposed to have a funnel. It was shown in the listing, but it didn't have one. This engine came complete with the funnel, which is a good thing. I do like the way the chimney fits on the extension to the central fire tube. Most of the design of this engine seems to be okay, but the choice of materials for critical components is definitely wrong in my opinion. In this clip I'm admitting some air to the boiler, not a lot, about 10 psi, but the engine will not run. And even when I increased the air pressure in the boiler, the engine still didn't run. The flywheel is far too light. Thankfully, the Bernhardt Vulcan that I bought first was fully complete in this area. It has the correct flywheel and the correct crankshaft, not a broken one like this. As I said, the weight of this flywheel is just nowhere near. It cannot provide sufficient kinetic energy to take the piston over top dead centre. Plus the hole in the middle is not the same diameter as what's left of the crankshaft. The original flywheel is not a very good casting, but it has sufficient weight to do what it's supposed to do. For the Super Bernac Vulcan that I'm building, I'm going to make a new flywheel, so I can use this flywheel on this Bernac Vulcan. And also the crankshaft. This crankshaft is no good at all. The crank pin seems very short. On the other flywheel, which is quite original, the crank pin is much longer than this. It's time to disconnect the connecting rod from the crank pin and remove the piston. And the piston looks fine. There doesn't appear to be any scoring on the piston at all. I'm fitting the crankshaft from the previous engine 
to this one. I immediately notice a couple of differences, apart from it being longer because this one isn't broken, the crank pin is made from brass. On the other crank web, the crank pin is made from steel. I did notice more wear at the end of the piston rod on this engine than on the other. I think this may be a later burnout Vulcan than the previous one that I had. It is slightly different. The main brass frame that holds the engine to the boiler was loose, so I tightened the screws and now it's not loose. Here is problem number one, and this is a really silly problem. Whoever designed this engine used a brass crankshaft, which bends as soon as you look at it. In this clip I'm attempting to straighten the flywheel by bending the crankshaft, but you only get so many goes at this before metal fatigue sets in and the flywheel drops off. The flywheel is threaded onto the crankshaft, which is never a good idea, and as you can see, when I put it together, it's wonky. I can't really show on the video just how gently I'm moving the flywheel. You only have to breathe on it, and the crankshaft bends. But it runs, and it actually runs quite well. On the original crankshaft, on the original Vulcan that I bought, there is a spacer between the bracket and the flywheel. I found a part that would do this in my box of bits, but it didn't look too good. In this clip, I'm bending the bracket into the correct position. And to do this, you do have to apply quite a lot of pressure, but very controlled pressure. Overdo it, and you have a problem. After I straightened the mounting bracket into the correct position, I fitted the crankshaft, and this is the spacer that goes on the end of it. And when you screw the flywheel up against the spacer, you can accurately control the end float of the crankshaft. Looking at this, it appears that the flywheel is not accurate, but it is. It's the thread on the end of the crankshaft that's bent. Once I tighten the flywheel against the collar, everything should be fine. The sun will come out and the birds will start singing, but this is not the case. Once again, I had to spend quite a lot of time truing up the flywheel on the crankshaft because once again this crankshaft is also made from brass. What I'm going to do on my Super Vulcan is make a new crankshaft and fit the crankshaft in proper bearings in the bracket. This should make a big difference. But I really don't want to do much on this one other than give it a bit of a surface clean. I will probably steam this in the next video and then it will go into my cabinet. My cabinet which contains old curiosities from a time gone by. But please note it does not contain the remains of either of my ex-wives. The difference in the way the engine now runs is quite remarkable. I think it's time to give it a final tweak to true up the flywheel. I literally just touched it. There we go, that's good enough. The small valve on the side of the port block is on the exhaust side of things. As you screw it inwards, the engine slows down, because part of the exhaust is blocked up. I really am quite pleased with this. OK, I repainted the flywheel. That's not looking quite as accurate and authentic as it should do. I think that is more than good enough. Well, at least until I touch the flywheel. In the next episode of this very short series, I'm going to steam this thing. I've already done a compressed air test on the boiler, by placing the boiler away from me and pumping 30 psi into it and it will run at nothing like 30 psi in reality. I'm not going to give this boiler a hydraulic test because it's old and it would probably fail. Before I can steam it though I do have to fix the safety valve. It makes a very interesting noise when I show it in slow motion. This is a Burnack variable speed steam engine Vulcan model. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.
Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.